months. Mid-season 11 is here only two and a half weeks after the season launch, which is incredibly fast, but that's likely due to their Transformers collab release date, which was locked in for today, July 9th. And we have Megatron Ramatra, Optimus Prime Reinhardt, RC Alari, and Bumblebee Bastion. The skins actually look really sick, but we have to focus on the balance patch, and it's uh, a little questionable. I call this patch the Rise of the Tank Titans, and uh, you'll just have to see. Let's go. Armor is changing where the flat damage reduction is going to be increased from 5 to 10 per projectile. The devs comment that the armor changes have had a positive impact on which heroes and damage types are slowed down by armor health. We're increasing the damage reduction on it to further widen the pool of heroes that are significantly affected by armor's defense. This is a very significant buff to armor and it will nerf the damage of some heroes by a lot, with the biggest losers being Roadhog, Bastion, Echo, Genji, Soldier, Baptiste, and Lucio. If your hero main was called out, report to the principal's office. Here's a graph plotting the raw damage versus effective damage from the different patches, along with an entire spreadsheet, both linked in the description. Say thank you, Cactus Puppy, for putting this together for the community. Okay, the tank roll passive is also going to get a change. The ultimate generation is going to be reduced from 30 to 40% but the knockback resistance will be reduced from 50 to 40 percent the devs comment that dealing damage to tank heroes will be slightly less rewarding with the increased reduction to the alt generation and will help balance out the increased healing they may receive with the change to the damage roll passive in this patch while the knockback resistance was generally useful for tank heroes and their emphasis on positioning it was also reaching a point where it was difficult for players to tell if knockback abilities were even having any effect on them for D.Va, the Defense Matrix max duration is going to be increased from 3 to 3.5 seconds, and the Micro Missile Explosion Damage is going to be increased from 4 to 5.5 damage, which translates from 126 damage to 153 damage from the Micro Missiles if everything hits. Max duration of Defense Matrix is increased by half a second by reducing the rate at which the resource meter drains when in use, so it won't take longer to regenerate. The increased damage on micro missiles will help the ability feel relatively more impactful against larger health pools. For Doomfist, the best defense, that's the name of his passive, the overhealth gained per target is going to be increased from 35 to 40 HP, and the delay before overhealth begins to drain will be increased from 1 to 3 seconds. The devs comment that most of Doomfist's survivability is through his excellent mobility, but this boost to his passive overhealth generation will enable him to stay in the fight longer before disengaging, especially when hitting multiple targets with his ability. For Junker Queen's commanding shout, the overhealth gained is going to be increased from 150 to 175 HP, and the Adrenaline Rush passive Wound Damage Self-Healing Multiplier is going to be increased from 2 to 2.5x. The devs comment that Junker Queen is relatively small and fast for a tank hero, so Commanding Shout doesn't need a ton of bonus health to be effective. The increased wound healing better rewards her for managing her abilities well. For Malga, the Cardiac Overdrive, duration is actually going to be nerfed from 5 to 3 seconds. But, but, the lifesteal is going to be increased from 60 to 100%. The damage reduction is going to be increased from 30 to 40%, but... But again, allies now only receive half of the lifesteal and damage reduction effect value, so 50% lifesteal and 20% damage reduction, respectively. For Overrun, the knockback damage is going to be increased from 25 to 30, and the stomp damage is going to be increased from 60 to 75, which means the critical stomp is going to be going from 120 to 150. The devs comment that Cardiac Overdrive is Malga's primary tanking ability that keeps him in the fight, but the previous duration was difficult to counter. It's now more a potent effect with a shorter duration to increase the importance of choosing both the right moment to use it as Mauga and when to try to mitigate against it as an enemy. Arissa's fortified duration is going to be increased from 3.5 to 4 seconds. Yeah, that's it. The devs comment that Fortify and Javelin spin abilities were weakened further than necessary when Arissa was overly dominant. She has not been performing well since then, but in this patch, where we're broadly adjusting how tanky or impactful the role is, there is room again to return to some of Fortify's effectiveness. For Matra's Nemesis form, bonus armor is going to be increased from 225 to 300, and the pummel damage is going to be increased from 60 to 65. The devs comment that the pummel damage adjustment is notable as it reduces the number of punches required to knock out a 250 HP hero. Reinhardt's Barrier Field Max Health is going to be increased from 1400 to 1600, and the Barrier Regen Rate is going to be increased from 140 to 160 health per second. 
the charge wall impact damage is going to be increased from 275 to 300 as well. The devs comment that one of the core design goals for Reinhardt is to be the hero that shields the team. In the past, we've reduced the barrier health significantly in order to improve other offensive aspects of this kit to better fit the fast-paced gameplay of Overwatch 2, but perhaps it was too much. We still want to avoid barriers feeling mandatory due to how useful they can be and keep tank diversity at a healthy level. However, with this patch, looking at the tank role in particular, we're increasing Ryan's health barrier health again and we'll evaluate further. Roadhog's Pig Pen area damage after activating will be increased from 30 to 45 DPS. The recovery time is going to be reduced from 0.55 to 0.4, so the time before it snaps. The cooldown of it will also begin immediately when used instead of after a short delay. Devs comment that Pig Pen wasn't very useful outside of it being used in the chain hook combo, so we're increasing its potential threat if an enemy stays within its area. which translates it from 80 to 120 total damage because there's like a splash and direct impact damage component. We won't get into it. The devs comment that Sigma is a tank that does not currently have an issue with survivability when cycling between managing his barrier kinetic grasp and weapon range. We are, however, increasing the damage of accretion to bring back more of the threat it used to pose and increase the satisfaction in landing it as it also did not benefit from the global increase to projectile sizes. For Winston, the Primal Rage max health gained is going to be increased from 500 to 700. For Tesla Cannon, the secondary fire charge time is going to be reduced from 1 second to 0.85 seconds. The devs comment that Winston is one of the top performing tanks at the moment, though when considering how satisfying the individual abilities within its kit are, the Tesla Cannon secondary fire felt underwhelming for how long it took to charge, so it'll now be a lot more fluid. We also still want to make Primal Rage Mode Winston be killable, but adding some health to it will avoid some of the extreme situations where it could happen too quickly. Wrecking Ball's Adaptive Shields. The allied over health transfer ratio is going to be increased by 50%. So for example, a normal transfer of 75 over health will now be increased by 50% on this patch, which gives it 112.5 HP. The quad cannon's automatic reload time when you're transformed to ball form will be reduced from 2 to 1.6 seconds. The devs comment that Wrecking Ball has excellent mobility and survivability, and will now be more efficient in transferring some of that survivability to his teammates, should he choose to return to them. We're also making the automatic reload in ball form match his manual reload timing for a smoother transition between them. The last tank receiving buffs, Zarya. Particle Barrier and Projected Barrier both have their health increased from 200 to 225, and the duration of each is going to be increased from 2 to 2.5 seconds. The devs comment that increasing the health on these barriers also means the total energy Zarya can gain per bubble is increased. So, this is a boost to both her offensive and defensive capabilities. Onto the DPS heroes, the DPS passive is going to be nerfed against tanks specifically from 20% to 10% healing reduction. The other support DPS heroes do receive the normal 20% healing reduction. The devs comment that with tank heroes being the front lines, they have this healing reduction effect nearly all the time and are generally the most reliant on incoming healing to support them as well. The damage roll passive is providing an important function to the game overall, but its effects on tanks and survivability and pace of the gameplay is more impactful relative to the other roles. As such, we are reducing its potency against tank heroes. For Ash, or Bob rather, Bob now gets the tank roll passive ability, so that means he takes 25% less damage to the head, is a bit more resistant to knockbacks, and will have the DPS passive half as effective against him. For Cassidy's primary fire of his Peacekeeper, the falloff range is going to be nerfed from 25 to 35 meters to 20 to 30 meters, and that means the damage will start scaling down at closer ranges. That's a pretty big nerf. Devs comment that with his current tuning, Cassidy is performing too well in too many aspects between his range, his burst damage, and survivability, leading him to be a dominant choice among the damage heroes by an overwhelming amount. The gameplay goal for Cass is to be the sturdier close range hitscan who is more proficient at dealing with high mobility flankers. With this in mind, we're pulling back the effective falloff range of his weapon to help him align with those gameplay goals and to open up more hero variety from the damage roll. For Farah, the concussive blast explosion damage is going to be reduced from 30 to 0 but the explosion knockback radius is going to be increased from 6 to 8 meters and the knockback itself is going to be increased by another 11%. 
The devs comment that this is actually a reversion back to Farah's Concussive Blast from before her recent rework. Dealing even a small amount of damage with this ability increases her lethality significantly and made it too reliable in finishing off low health targets due to its wide area and fast projectile speed without waiting for the full recovery to fire another rocket. For Ana, the sleep dart duration on tank heroes, who would have guessed, is going to be decreased from 3.5 to 3 seconds. The devs comment, rather small change here, but we'd like to minimize the amount of time tanks can be taken out of the fight and they are also the easiest targets to hit with sleep dart. For Ilari, the healing pylon, not really a gameplay change, but I'll include it here. It says, allies no longer see the destroyed UI when healing pylon breaks. The devs comment that the Ilari will still see this UI alert, but allies generally don't need to, as it could occur fairly often and be distracting. For Zenyatta, the final change of the patch, Transcendence, small buff where the ultimate cost is going to be decreased by 10%. The devs comment that we're reducing the cost of Transcendence as Zenyatta, who was impacted more than most by some of the changes in this patch. And I think they're hinting at the armor change, which is true. That's it for the balance portion of the patch. There is an audio update where they actually adjusted the volume and audio cues when shooting enemies with white base health, shield health, armor, or over health. Summer Games is back. You have Lucio Ball, Winston's Beach Volleyball, play to earn the new sprays, player icons, and some challenges from now until July 29th. The Lifeguard skins and the Mythic Weapon skins come into the shop later on in the season, July 30th and July 23rd, respectively. And finally, there's Twitch drops. Come to twitch.tv slash carq and watch for three hours to earn the Symmetra Pose Spray, six hours for the cute Symmetra icon, and 10 hours for the legendary Art Deco Symmetra skin.